Guild Wars 2's Power Virtuoso, an absolute demon of a DPS class, going to be top in the bench on a few fights, extremely good on fractals, landscape, and a lot of other content. Let's have a look at why this class is just so damn good. What's making it so good? Well, it's got extremely high damage and it's power damage. Power damage is always going to be just a little bit more preferred than condition damage, but on the whole, power damage, especially for fractals and a lot of raid encounters, is just so good because you can burst things down and phase fights before you see mechanics, and this has got strong burst. The power virtuoso, incredibly high burst, very nice rotation that flows from piece to piece, especially with your heal skill, refresh your phantom abilities, it does work nicely into each other. And the power virtuoso, or in Mesma in general, has got so much utility, amazing CC, and has a lot of things it can bring to most fights that just make it so good, especially things like a focus pull. On the negative sides, a lot of the rotation is quite fast paced and you will lock yourself out especially if you need a focus pull at a clutch time and you've just switched weapons you can't get back to it it's not your utility it's a weapon skill another thing especially for a player like me who fat fingers a lot if you do use the wrong shatter your dps is going to drop quite a bit so you got to be very careful when you work in the rotation but once you've got it down and you know exactly what's coming next it feels very glossy and very smooth now let's have a look at some gear and stats. Basically our gear will be made up of Berserkers and Assassins pieces. What we are going to try aim for is about 60% crit chance, but there are two ways to play it. Either you can go for a more fractal bolt with force and impact, which I highly, highly recommend for fractals, or you can go for another bolt, which is basically your raid star bolt, which is force and accuracy. This will allow you to take more Berserkers pieces, although you will drop the bonus from Superior Sigil of Impact. But in Raiding and a lot of landscapes, you're not getting as much CC bars. But for Fractals, you get so many CC bars that it is a massive DPS loss not to run this. You can, however, run your Impact build for Raiding and just take a bit of a hit on certain bits of DPS. For Runes, you either want Rune of the Scholar or Rune of the Dragon Hunter. Both of them are fine as they both give power and veracity, although the Dragon Hunter will give slightly higher veracity. Then, for your Relic, you definitely want Relic of the Thief currently. Relic of the Thief currently is the higher DPS build, but once the bugs are fixed on the Relic of the Fireworks, that's probably going to be the best one to take. Relic of Fireworks should work out to, to more DPS, but it's currently bugged and not affecting certain abilities on a lot of classes, and those classes currently use Relic of the Thief, but will switch over once that's dealt with. So for current, use Relic of the Thief and have a look and maybe see in the description below. Perhaps I'll change it when Relic of the Firework is working correctly. The long and short of it is this. If you are running the Sigil of Impact, you want to aim for about 2155 precision. If you are running Accuracy, you can drop that down to 2005. This will give you 60% crit chance on both builds. And that's what we need to obviously cap to get as much DPS as possible. But what I will do is put two builds in the description below. And this time I promise to put them. And those are the two builds that you can kind of look at. And for weapons, you want a Dagger Sword and Great Sword. This is your highest DPS output build. However, there might be some situations where you might be required to bring a focus pull of sorts. And in that case, you have an option of either going dagger focus and keep the great sword or dagger sword, sword focus. Those are the two options that you kind of can look at. Generally, the dagger sword, sword focus is what's accepted. However, dropping the great sword is a massive DPS loss as well as you do generate a lot of blades with that greatsword. Now for food and utilities, you want either something like the sweet and spicy butternut squash, which is 100 power, 70 ferocity, or the ascended variants thereof. And then for utilities, you want the superior sharpening stones or something like this that generates extra power. Now let's have a look at some traits and specializations. Specialization one, domination. First trait, Illusions of Vulnerability. What this does is it inflicts vulnerability when interrupting a foe. We are going to be bringing quite a lot of vulnerability to our fractal, raid and landscape groups. And this is massive for DPS. Now in column 1, there's only two ways to go. 
bountiful blades if you are running a great sword is massive this is going to be a lot of dps increase basically improves all the great sword skills allows your mirrored blade i.e your blade two to bounce as well as when using phantasmal berserker i.e skill four to summon an additional berserker both these are illusionary skills make sure to note that and they will affect something later on down the line but massive dps you have to have this trait if you are running the great sword However, if you are running something like the Dagger Sword Sword Focus build, you may look at Empowered Illusions, basically allowing Illusions to do extra strike damage, and that is going to be fairly big, especially for a power DPS class. Minor trait 2, a Dazzling, Dazzling or Stunning a Foe, Applies Vulnerability. Yeah, that's a fairly good skill to have. Now in Column 2, Egotism, a fairly good skill. Basically allowing you to do 10% more damage when you have more health than the opponent. This is fairly good to allow us to do some big DPS, especially if your healers aren't very bad. Although you can consider Shattered Concentration. This can be fairly good in some fights if you are struggling for boon removal. Although generally, you've got a lot of skills that kind of do remove boons. But yeah, there might be niche cases maybe on landscape where, you know, if the target is getting protection, rather better to remove it and do a little bit less damage because you will do more damage overall. Minor trade 3, Fragility. Obviously a massive skill, allowing you to do increased damage per each stack of vulnerability on the target. This is going to feel bigger on landscape and things like this as you will provide a lot of vulnerability, allowing you to do more DPS. However, in Fractals and Raiding, Generally, vulnerability is capped, so this will kind of just feel like you're doing big DPS in general, but very important to be aware of. In column three, there's only one way to go. Vicious expression. You and your illusions deal extra damage, i.e. 15% more damage to foes without boons, as well, disabling a foe, i.e. like CC in the foe, removes two boons from there. This is massive because, i.e. it's allowing you to do some good boon rip, but not just that, do some massive DPS. And for specialization number two, dueling. Minor trait number one, critical infusion. Basically gaining vigor when delivering a critical hit. Because we are aiming to be 100% crypt cap with fury, this means that you will basically have 50% uptime of vigor just by yourself. Now in column one, there's only one way to go, phantasmal fury. Phantasms you summon have fury. Now I'm not going to go too much into what phantasms are, but the brief notes on it is this, is when you summon a phantasm, you summon it with a certain skill, i.e. great seal of fall. What this will do is summon a phantasm that will basically try and do an ability, a special move. If it is interrupted or dodged, obviously that move doesn't hit and it basically will go away. However, if it does land its special ability, it will become a clone of you. But in this case of being a virtuoso, it will become one of our blades. So i.e. phantasm skills are fairly massive and allowing your phantasm to have fury allows the special attack to crit basically because it's going to inherit your stats and then obviously have fury. So it will have 100% crit chance and therefore the big attack that that skill does will hit like a train. That makes this skill and this trait massive to have. Now minor trait 2 is basically where everything comes together. This is a massive skill and it's deceptively good. Sharper images. Illusions inflict bleeding on critical hits. Now what are illusions? You'll notice that a lot of skills are illusions. I.e. Greatsword 4, the Phantasm throws an illusionary Greatsword. Your Greatsword 3, stab an illusionary Greatsword. Your Greatsword 2, throw an illusionary blade illusionary skills on crit will inflict bleeding this also means that when we use our phantasm skill 4 this will throw an illusionary skill that can inflict bleeding bleeding is deceptively good and i'll explain why later when we get to virtuoso but for now just know that every time an illusion crits it will inflict bleeding and this is fairly massive now in column two there is a hard skill to explain fences finesse basically when you or an illusion strikes with a one-handed sword or spear you gain a stack of fences finesse which is basically 15 veracity and this can stack up to 10 times so you could technically have an extra 150 ferocity by stacking this. This also in general reduces sword and spear cooldowns, but that's not important. What is important is to understand that the only skill that we will have that will proc this really is either sword 5 or if you want to, you could go sword 4-4 four, four, or something like this just to kind of try and proc it. This means that we can't just sit there and camp greatsword from range like a prawn. We have to get in 
hit skills five four and this is also why things like dagger sword sword focus are fairly good options because it actually is fairly hard to keep up fences finesse at, especially at 10 stacks but make sure that when you go to your great sword you have a few stacks of fences finesse you want to make sure that you're smacking everybody with some big skills as soon as you go into great sword with this extra veracity because it will equate to a lot of dps so it is one of those buffs to be aware of of when you've dropped yourself something like skill five or whatever on sword when you go over to your great sword try hit your skills four two and three as quickly as possible as well as tons of utilities because then you will be making use of this 150 veracity minor trade three master fencer this basically just provides fury to your group basically a 50 percent duration when you crit strike a target and that's just going to happen naturally so basically you're just helping the healers and everybody else with boons and that's kind of you know fairly okay and then in column three there's only one way to go superiority complex basically crits deal more damage they're simple as that then we will also get additional crit damage to targets that are either disabled or below the health threshold so from 50 percent to dead you're just doing increased damage so this is basically just massive damage especially with crits now let's bring it together with our finest specialization virtuoso your first minor trait basically changes all your shatters into your blade songs the only thing to be aware of here is that when a clone would have been summoned instead we are stuck in a blade this is important to know to know which skills are producing blades especially at the power one in the condition virtuoso build we're getting blades so easily so we're shattering much more often however in the power build we got to be very specific to know to not overcap on blades at certain times so in column one our choice is mental focus increasing our strike damage by 10 percent when the target is within 600 range we are a fairly massively ranged class. We've got 1,200 range on almost everything. So making sure that the target is actually inside of 600 can be pretty big to make sure that we're doing as much DPS as possible. Minor trade two, a deadly blades. What this allows you to do is basically stack vulnerability when you crit a target as well, increase our output damage by 5% for five seconds when we successfully shatter this can be fairly important to try and space our shatters a little bit however generally it's more dps to just shatter and carry on with the rotation than to try and time this too much now in column two again one really good choice phantasmal blades what this does is when your phantasm i.e your skills that produce phantasms like sword five successfully perform their attack what they do is they throw an additional phantasmal blade at the target doing quite a bit of dps now if you are on landscape and you want something with a little bit of difference to it you can look at something like duelist reversal basically dodging and blocking attacks will give you some quickness fury as well as regen so this is just more of a survival thing and if you are in landscape and you just want a little bit more survivability as well as maybe some quickness for some big burst dps this can be pretty good to use but definitely for all coordinated content you will definitely use phantasmal blade now in column three we're going for blood song and this is where it gets confusing a lot of people will look at this and be like bleeding is recharging my stacks this is what we take for condi virtuous and you think to yourself wait well, none of our attacks do bleeding and this is where it gets confusing remember back in dueling we had sharper images our illusions inflict bleeding when they crit and we're taking the extra crit chance on our phantasms that are throwing illusionary skills at people basically it equates to more dps to use these and rather get the bleeds from illusionary skills to try and restock blades that way so we are going to get blades quicker than any other choice in column three by choosing this trait and making sure that our fury is capped all the time now let's quickly have a look at some things that you might have to switch out remembered empowered illusions if you're not using a great sword to switch off of bountiful blades can be pretty good now if you are doing a lot of smaller pulls i.e fractals perhaps running your way to bosses it's sometimes fairly good to use infinite forge especially if you're not going to shatter for some of the smaller trash pulls this will allow you to just kind of recharge blades as you're going towards the boss and then you always just switch when you get to a boss and also another small thing is actually to switch back to jagged mind yes you are going to lose a little bit of dps especially if you're one of the players that doesn't like to stay within 600 range or stack tightly 
Perhaps you're a bit more of a skittish player and you definitely want to be further away from a boss. Or perhaps you're on landscape and you're thinking, well, I'm not going to get close to that thing. It's going to one-shot me. Switching to Jagged Mind will allow you to basically get extra bleeds from crits, which will proc Bloodsong more often. This means you'll be able to use Shatter skills more often, i.e. you'll be able to CC without really losing DPS or gain Distortion without really losing any DPS. So this could be a fairly good option for some landscape or for players that are very scared of the game. But as you get better, you'll definitely want to switch back to mental focus. Now let's have a look at some of our utilities. Obviously, the heal skill is fairly spoken for Signet of Ether. Heal yourself whenever you summon an illusion on the passive, but the active skill is the reason why. Heal yourself and recharge all Phantasm skills. This is massive because this is part of our DPS rotation. Notice it's also in PvE 100% reduced recharge on Phantasm skills. So yeah, I'll explain this on the rotation concept, but it's pretty much non-negotiable. Now the only non-negotiable utility you have is Phantasmal Disenchanter. It's too good to switch out. Massive DPS, boon rip, as well as four bounces. This skill is an absolute slogger, and you'll see exactly why in the rotation concept it's just so good. But other skills, Reign of Swords, this is also a massive skill, big area of effect, five hits, five pulses, massive DPS, especially on AoE fights, but can be switched out if you need to. Mantra of Pain, obviously a massive skill. When first charging it, you'll get some decent stacks of might, but two charges and big DPS. Generally, the play is to obviously charge it before a fight, use one charge and just never use the second one. Unless you're basically about to kill the boss, you can burst both charges just for the DPS and that way you'll just get some extra DPS killing something. But just make sure it's recharged before the next fight. Generally, if you do want to and there are large phases, you can also burst both and then while you're in the downtime, i.e. doing no DPS, you can just wait for it and recharge it so it's ready to go again. This is quite big DPS, although this will be the first utility you'll generally switch out and afterwards, Reign of Swords will be the next utility that you'll switch out for whatever you need. Now, there are so many utilities with the Mesmer, you're absolutely god tier blessed with everything. Generally, things I enjoy, feedback, which is obviously a projectile reflect, as well as an ethereal field, big DPS. A portal, obviously massive for most content. Even things like mirror images. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this skill, but it basically is a stun break, breaks enemy targeting, and summons two clones. Remember, clones convert into daggers. So if for some reason you're doing something and you're going to get knocked down, but a CC is coming, you, you can consider this. I'm not saying it's good in any stretch of the imagination, but I see the appeal for it sometimes. Blink, obviously massive skill. Mimic allowing you to recharge skills quicker as well as almost use them almost off cooldown. This skill is definitely really good. You've got a couple of mantras here with massive things. You've got Condi removal. You've got stability in Aegis, which is massive for some CDM fights. As well as just these awesome signets that I really do enjoy. And for elite utilities, you are flippin' blessed. There's so much to choose from. I like to keep it on most signets, i.e. signets of humility. This is huge CC, so for most fractals, generally CC is the most important thing to do other than massive DPS, obviously. And this just allows you to basically break bars very, very quickly. But obviously, mass invisibility, a massive skill, especially if you take it just before you pick up a mist lock. You can use it twice to obviously just get as much utility out of it. Time warp for very niche situations or if you just need a little bit of quickness but 1000 cuts is probably the way to go. Generally, I'll bounce between Moa Signet and 1000 cuts, as 1000 cuts is just massive, massive DPS. So what you need to try to figure out is what are you doing in the fight? Are there CC bars? Do you just need to do DPS? Are you doing some sort of skip? What is basically required of you and pick your elite utility and your utilities in general based on that. Now that we've gone through our utilities, let's have a look at some of our weapon skills. Your auto attack, flying cutter for your dagger, a big DPS skill with a huge range. Also notice this is a physical projectile. This means that you can use this combo finisher to go through combo fields, get as much DPS as possible. Notice it does also pierce. So if you have the opportunity to pierce targets, try and select a further back target, get big DPS. Skill two, blade call is fairly similar. 
this skill will basically do a lot of the same but bigger dps skill three unstable blade storm this skill basically you place down on the floor and what it will do is it will basically spit out blades and do some big dps as well as hitting the targets around so you can almost slightly precast this in some fights just before switching to allow it to do some big dps now sword four illusionary repose what this does is it's a channeled skill that you will use that will block one attack once blocking the attack you will hit the target and also then create an illusion this is big because remember we do want clones we do want illusions so that we can recharge blades but if i do proc this skill a second time it's a two second days i.e a 200 defiance break bar as well as some vulnerability this could be pretty massive for CC bars. So what you need to try figure out is what do you need? Do you need blades or do you need CC? And then when using the skill, figure out what you want to do. Generally, what I would do is I would bait if there is no CC required. I will bait with this to try and get back some blades, i.e. clones. Because that can be quite a good way to do. Skill 5, a massive skill. Phantasmal Swordsman. What this does is it creates a phantasm through performing a sword strike that will create the illusion to also perform a sword strike if yours hits you gain the might and if it's hit it becomes a clone this is a massive skill because remember we need the phantasms the illusions to try and stack as much bleeding as possible so part of the rotation is going to be to use this fairly much off cooldown i'll explain that when we get there now onto the great sword obviously your auto attack massive aoe damage this weapon does a larger damage the further away a target is however our traits inside of virtuosa allows to do more damage if a target is within 600 range so you just need to make sure that you're either at minimum or maximum range to try and get the most out of this. Greatsword 2, Mirror Blade, a massive skill. Throw an illusionary blade that bounces between targets doing less damage as it bounces. But remember, we've traded to increase its bounces. Also, creating a clone at the first target. Remember, we want illusions, we want clones to stack blades and get those bleed stacks. This is a massive skill and with only a 5 second cooldown, this skill is going to generate so many blades. Greatsword 3, Mind Stab. Creates an illusionary greatsword through the ground to stab at a target location, i.e. this is a big AoE for five targets, as well as create some cripple. Cripple, obviously a fairly good skill to have to try and control ads inside of raids or fractals. And five seconds, it's quite decent as well. That's also a bit of a soft CC, so just be aware of that. And probably the biggest skill, Phantasmal Berserker. Throw an illusionary greatsword at your foe, removing boons, so this is a boon rip skill. When the enemy is struck, it will create a phantasm that will whirl through the enemy. Now just notice that phantasm damage is huge. And this is also a skill, remember, phantasms, illusionary, creating bleeds, stacking blades. That's what needs to go through your brain. So this is a massive skill for some big DPS. Now let's have a look at our blade song shatters. So basically, by being virtuoso, we have blade songs instead of shatters, and they use blades. F1 a blade song harmony is your most important skill. We do not have a trigger, i.e., numbers, because we are not conditioned, so we have one. Generally, this is your priority to shatter. F2 your blade song sorrow is your second most important to hit. Okay, there's a little bit of confusion. Damage purple bleed isn't as strong as it should be but this is still a fairly decent skill to be used. Almost equally is your F5, your Blade Turn Requiem. This skill will basically create daggers around you and or blades around you, and these will do some decent DPS while DPS him. So generally your F1, 2, and F5 are your most important to shatter. Your F3 is fairly good for CC. This is the skill that you want to use in some clutch situations when there's a big CC. However, do notice because we are power, we don't generate blades as quickly or as easily unless you have obviously traded into Jagged Mind. This means that using the skill will be a fair bit of a DPS loss, but if we need to use it, we need to use it. Then F4, your Blade Song Distortion. Because we are not conditioned, we don't have extra boons that we're getting from this. So this skill is literally only for distortion, i.e. being immune to all conditions and all damage for one second. Now let's have a look at the toughest part of the guide, the rotation concept. 
Before the fight starts, you want to pre-charge Mantra of Pain. To wait for this duration in a fight is just too long and not going to be good for your DPS. Second of all, we need to think about our mindset. Obviously, we are very ranged, but we do want to get within range to try and make use of good skills like mental focus. So what we want to try do is, first of all, get this Phantasmal Swordsman up as quickly as possible, because we do need this to try practice things like Fences Finesse. So what we want to try do is get Phantasmal Swordsman up. You can obviously go 4-4 if you don't think CC is coming just to try and get a bit extra from Phantasmal Swordsman. We want to throw down some of these skills like Unstable Blade Storm as well as Blade Call just to kind of put them on cooldown. We want to shatter as early as possible as well so that we can get these clones to create blades rather than waste them because if you are at 5 blades. So what you want to do is think about like Phantasmal Swordsman, Shatter, perhaps Sword 4-4 if you don't really think you're going to need for CC, 3-2 and switch into your greatsword. Now what we want to do is also while those skills are going off use one mantra of pain. This is an instant cast and we don't need to do anything for it so this could be cast while casting other skills like your phantasmal swordsman or any other skill. Now what we want to do obviously is try and use some big greatsword skills but before we get into that we want to use phantasmal disenchanter then we want to use Phantasmal Berserker, use our heal skill. Now what Signet of Ether will do is it will reset Phantasmal Disenchanter, Phantasmal Berserker as well as obviously Phantasmal Swordsman. Then we want to use Phantasmal Berserker again as well as Phantasmal Disenchanter again. This is the biggest DPS spike we'll get. Obviously you want to throw a Reign of Swords down when you have a chance so perhaps after all of this throw it down as well as obviously Greatsword 2 and 3 and then just auto attack. Now, every single time you get towards four blades, you need to get ready to shatter because as soon as the fifth blade comes up, you want to shatter so that you're not over capping on blades, i.e. wasting blades because blades are very important to us. Especially as the power class, we're not going to be getting blades as quickly as if we were with Condi class. So we need to make sure that especially we are not wasting blades. Now, in our rotation, we are basically going to get two Phantasmal Berserkers out and in the other rotation, we'll get two Phantasmal Swordsmen out. That's basically your timer. Once you've hit that second one, you're weapon switching. Because A, you don't want to stay inside of your Dagger Sword too long because it's not as much DPS as your Greatsword. And you don't want to stay in your Greatsword for too long because you will drop off your stacks of Fences Finesse. So you want to try and get this rotation where you're basically doing two of the one and two of the other and then fill it in with whatever you can in between. Now when it comes to them to CC, remember when using any of your song shatters, your blade song shatters, they are very easily interruptible. Make sure that you don't interrupt them with a skill like Greatsword 5 or your heal skill or weapon switching or something like this. It does tend to stop put them on cooldown and that puts them on like almost a four second cooldown. So make sure, when, especially when it comes to things like CC, to hit the skills, see the blades go away, and then use the next skill. Because interrupting these skills can be a bugger. Because if you do interrupt something like Bladesong Harmony, you might have to use a secondary shatter, which isn't as powerful. And putting this skill on cooldown is probably your most important thing to do. So that you can have it back as quickly as possible, so that you can use it for bigger DPS. And that's it. That's pretty much the rotation you want. You want to obviously use Phantasm skills as well as any illusionary skill as often as possible. You want to try and use your Phantasmal Swordsman, then your Phantasmal Berserker, your Phantasmal Disenchanter, and then reset all your Phantasmans with your Signet of Ether so that you can use them again. And that's where the big burst is coming from. Then obviously remember your priority of Shatters, your F1, F2, and Blade 2 and Requiem, your F5 skill. Those are your most important. Remember to always use Mantra of Pain when it is at two charges. It should never stay at two charges for more than a couple of seconds. Then also remember if you are facing a fight and you've got time in between, burn both of them and then recharge while you're waiting. 
Now, if you are using the Dagger Sword Sword Focus build, don't forget to obviously switch off of Bountiful Blades to Empowered Illusions. This will increase your DPS for this build, although remember, the Great Sword is more DPS. It will loosen up your stress of Fences Finesse, as now you will have a sword on both sides of your weapon sets. What you need to do, obviously, is still use your Signet of Ether to reset both your Phantasmal Warden as well as your Phantasmal Swordsman. Now, they they are massive hitting skill. Remember also, Blurred Frenzy is a massive skill as well as an evasion frame. So using this as well as your auto attack is going to be big, big DPS. But the main reason to obviously bring this build is for Temporal Curtain. This skill is literally the best pulling game. This skill is meta on a lot of fights like your Slothazars, your Xeras and lots of fights like this where you need a massive pull. But with all that being said, don't forget how strong the knockback is on Illusionary Wave. Using this on fights like Samrog or even if for instance you're tanking on Solus Horror and you want to use this to help maintain the Tormented Dead, using these skills can be massive. So don't forget about that if you are wanting to do that. Obviously, if you are using something like Dagger Focus, and greatsword that might stuff up your rotation a little bit and your build especially then you might need to look away from fences for net and maybe look towards evasive mirror or blinding dissipation although this would be a massive dps lot and is highly not recommended but perhaps you're one of those people that just enjoys camping greatsword and, and only switch when you need the focus ball ah different strokes it all depends on your game style and for the higher tier content obviously you're going to want to squeak towards benchmark but if you're doing landscape content sometimes it's fun to have just different utilities and different weapons thanks for watching the guide i really hope you enjoyed it i enjoyed making it unfortunately i didn't make more guides this week one piece was just too good but thank you so much for watching it if you enjoyed it please Give me a like and a subscribe and if you didn't enjoy it thanks for watching anyway and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one cheers